This video is preparing us for the Chapter 1 test in Algebra 2. We're going to go through some of the basic topics that we worked on. This kind of will give you a little idea of all the different techniques that we worked with in Chapter 1 to make sure you're successful in the chapter test. So the very first question comes from the very beginning of the chapter, which was evaluating an expression. You'll notice it's a numerical expression. Now you have a couple options. You can do this in your head, you can do it by hand, or you can do it with your calculator. You have to remember your order of operations. So one option is to look and say, okay, I've got parentheses. So I'm going to do parentheses first. So I would get 7 squared minus 4 times 5 divided by 2. The next thing I want to do is exponents. So I'm going to get 49 minus, I can do multiplication next, 20 divided by 2. And then finally I want to do the division. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. So I'm going to get 49 minus 10, which is 39. So one thing you have to be able to do successfully on your test is to be able to evaluate any type of expression. It can be in this form. It could also be rational, meaning it has a numerator and denominator. Uh, you definitely can utilize your calculator as long as you use the correct notation when you're doing parentheses and exponents. The next thing that we did is we started solving equations. So now our problem started having equal sign for the first time as opposed to just simplifying. When you have something like this, I chose a problem like this that was kind of messy with our fractions. I give you some options. Uh, you could treat this exactly like what you're used to, get the a's on one side, get the numbers on the other side. Personally, when I see a problem like this, I like to clear fractions because I want to work with something as simple as possible so I can do a lot of the work in my head and not have to try to do work on my calculator. So what I'll notice when I do this problem is my least common denominator with 2, 3, 2, and 4 is going to be 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply every single term on each side by 12. And this should successfully eliminate fractions. So half of 12 is 6, so I get 6a. 2 thirds of 12 is 8. Negative a half times 12 is negative 6. And 3 fourths times 12 is 9. It is going to be negative because you're multiplying by a negative. Now it's a much easier problem to work with. I don't need a calculator. I can go through and get my a's on one side by adding 6a, get my numbers on the other by subtracting 8. So I get 12a equals negative 17 divided by 12. Negative 17 twelfths is perfectly acceptable. If you really want to write it as a decimal, you could, but there really is no need. This does not reduce. You can check that on your calculator if you'd like, but we can leave it as simply negative 17 twelfths. Try to get out of the habit of writing it as a mixed numeral. I know that it is negative 1 and 5 twelfths, but it's really preferred to keep it in this form. The next couple topics we did in class is we started talking about inequality. This is actually a compound inequality. This was the and inequality, where you have a kind of the sandwich inequality. You want to get x by itself, and whatever you do, you do in all three places. So I need to get rid of the 4, so I'm going to subtract 4 from the beginning part of the inequality, the middle, to get rid of it, and the end of the inequality. So I'm going to get negative 7 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4. Remember some of the things we talked about to guarantee that we did the work right, your inequalities should always point to the same direction. And not only that, they should be pointing towards the number that is smaller. And negative 7 is definitely smaller than, neg than 4. So you should feel pretty confident, especially if it's a more complicated one, that you did it correctly if you can check those basic rules. It's a great check and, and to ensure that you're not going to make the little mistakes. When it comes to graphing, I don't need a really specific number line as long as you have the smaller number first. Make sure you have the right circles. In this case, we have the or equal to. So that means that our circles in this case are both closed circles, meaning it includes that number. It is possible to have ones that one's closed, one's open, both closed, both open. And I'm going to connect in between. What this is saying is any number that is between negative 7 and 4, including those values, would be a solution to the original inequality. Next, we started working with absolute value. We had a couple different varieties of absolute value. This was a little more simplistic. This is an absolute value equation. You should also be comfortable doing absolute value inequalities, which is what we most recently did. For the absolute value equation, first thing you want to make sure is that the absolute value is isolated. For example, if the problem would have been something like this, 3b plus 4 in absolute values uh, minus 2 equals 11, I can't do anything until the absolute value is isolated. So I'd have to add 2 to both sides. This one, the way it's presented, is actually ready to go. So we made like two tree branches. Because there's more than one answer, you're always going to have two answers to an absolute value equation. One possibility is that the original piece in the absolute value is equal to the positive value, meaning the absolute value bars didn't really do anything. Or what if the absolute value actually made it negative, so we take what was in there and set it equal to a negative 13. 
because that absolute value could kind of negate something that was negative, or it might have been positive all along. So to solve, we're going to take 4 off of everything. Nice to just go across here. We'll get different answers, though. So we have 3b equals 9, and 3b equals negative 17. When I divide by 3, one of my answers is just 3. The other answer isn't quite as pretty, but it's still correct and perfectly acceptable. You get negative 17 thirds. Again, that doesn't reduce. That shouldn't be written as a mixed number. You're done. If you want to check your work, you can take both of these answers and put them back into the original inequality equation to make, or the absolute value equation, to make sure that it does make it true. Again, we talked um, about how you don't need to do a lot of simplifying and you don't have to do a lot of check. You can even check on your calculator. The last question is a word problem, and you want to take this word problem and write it symbolically. So 7 more than 4 times a number. When you see the word more than, you should be thinking that it's adding on. So 7 more than 4 times a number is obviously multiplication. You can write this a couple ways. I'm going to write it as 4x plus 7. You could write 7 plus 4x is greater than 3. Notice it didn't say greater than or equal to, so I'm just leaving it as a greater than sign. It wants to write the numbers, meaning what are all the x values that makes this a true statement. So we're going to subtract 7. So 4x is greater than negative 4. Divide by 4. Remember the rule, if you divide or multiply by a negative, you switch the inequality. We didn't, though. We divided by a positive. So your answers, your numbers as an equality, is all x values that are bigger than negative 1, not equal to negative 1. If you were asked to draw a graph, this is a single inequality, so you only need the number negative 1. You are greater than that. It's an open circle, and it is all your numbers to the right of that. And again, you can test that theory. You can put in a number that's bigger than negative 1, like 0 or 2 or 3, and put it in for x and show that it actually does make this inequality true. So that is what you're looking at to be ready for tomorrow's, tomorrow's test on Chapter 1. Hopefully, we all have very good test scores.